Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be covering fluoroquinolones. So let's get started. Fluoroquinolones, also known as quinolones for short, are a group of antibiotics that are really good at targeting gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. So some of the gram-negative bacteria it can target includes Haemophilus influenzae, which is a cause of epiglottitis in young children and other respiratory infections. It can also target Neisseria gonorrhea, which causes gonorrhea. Chlamydia, E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Salmonella, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The gram-positive bacteria that this group targets includes Streptococcus pneumoniae, especially the newer quinolones, and this includes the ones that have the little pink star beside of them, which we're going to go over here in a moment, and Enterococcus and Staphylococcus aureus. Now, because quinolones can treat a wide variety of bacteria, they're really good at treating cases of urinary tract infections, skin infections, respiratory infections, sexually transmitted infections, and then infections that affect the abdomen, joint, and bones. Now, let's talk about how quinolones are administered and how you can identify if your patient's taking a quinolone. So, typically, these medications are given orally because they're absorbed very well in the gut, but we can also give them parenterally if we need to. So, for identifying Identification purposes, whenever you're looking at your patient's medication list, they tell you they're on an antibiotic, this is the name. How can you tell that this is a fluoroquinolone? Well, remember the word fluoxacin, and that is what you're going to find in that generic name of this group of antibiotics. So we're talking about fluoroquinolone, which begins with FL, and we're talking about, remember, fluoxacin. And notice, FL is in all of those. So if you can remember fluoxacin, you're dealing with fluoroquinolones. Try to make that connection in your mind and you'll just never forget it. So some of these medications include ofloxacin, norfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, gemofloxacin, levofloxacin, and this is my favorite one to say, it's moxifloxacin, and delafloxacin. And then here, as I pointed out earlier, these ones with the pink little stars, these are the newer ones in this group. So now let's talk about how this group of antibiotics works to treat bacterial infections. So with fluoroquinolones, what they do is they have a bacterial bactericidal effect on the bacteria, meaning that they actually kill these bacteria. Instead of having a bacteriostatic effect like some of the other antibiotics we've talked about in this series, where they inhibit its growth or reproduction. Instead, these just kill kill them dead, they're, they're not going to fool around. So how they do this is that they inhibit the bacteria's DNA replication process. And bacteria knows that in order for it to continue surviving in its environment, it has to make copies of itself. So how it does this is it makes copies of its DNA. And remember, DNA is like the instruction manual for a living organism. It tells that organism how to function, how to reproduce and survive. So it has to make copies of this. And there's many enzymes that play a role in this replication process. And fluoroquinolones target two particular enzymes that I want you to remember. One enzyme is called DNA gyrase, and then the other type is topoisomerase 4. So to help us understand how quinolones work, let's first simplify the process of how this bacteria undergoes DNA replication, hence makes copies of itself, and then talk about how fluoroquinolones come along and disrupt some of this process and in the end kills our bacteria. So here, whenever we have double strand DNA, it looks similar to this. We have one strand here, and then we have another strand here. It's like wrapped around itself. Well, in order to replicate, hence make copies of itself, those strands have to separate so we can get some copies made. So in order to do this, an enzyme comes in called helicase and separates these strands. So you have one hanging out here and one hanging out there. Then what comes behind that is another enzyme called DNA polymerase. It comes in and makes copies. So it slides up and down this strand and makes a beautiful copy here and then makes another beautiful copy here. Now as this was happening, this other part of the strand that wasn't separated has started to, in a sense, get tightly wound around itself. We call this, it's become super coiled. Now we need to alleviate this super coiledness of this strand because we need these parts to fold over so we can continue with this replication process. So an enzyme is going to come in called DNA gyrase and it's going to help alleviate this tightness this super coil that's happened. So how it does this is it's going to like slice and reconnect parts of it. It loosens it up. 
So once we have the role of DNA gyrase complete, these newly copied daughter DNA strands are going to fold over. Now as they fold over, we have the beautiful copies, but there's a problem. They're still connected and they need to separate so they can go on, do their own thing, and make more bacteria. So we need them to separate. In order to separate, the enzyme topoisomerase 4 is going to come in and it separates it. So when we throw on a fluoro alone it can disrupt this process and how it does this it really depends on if we're dealing with a gram-negative bacteria or a gram-positive bacteria so if we're dealing with gram-negative it mainly goes after the DNA gyrase enzyme so it's going to disrupt how this strand is able to not be super coiled so if we can prevent this process of it helping the super coiled part of the DNA strand, we're going to prevent it from being able to go further in this replication process, hence killing our bacteria. Now, if we're dealing with a gram-positive bacteria, it mainly wants to inhibit this topoisomerase 4. So it's going to prevent these daughter DNA strands from separating from itself. They can't separate, we can't get DNA replication, hence we get dead bacteria. Now let's talk about the nurse's role for administering quinolones. So before you administer, you want to just confirm your patient is not allergic to this medication. And then during administration, you wanna make sure that this medication is being effective. Is it actually treating your patient and are they getting better? For instance, how are their temperatures? Are they hypo or hyperthermic? That's not good. How's their white blood cell count? Is it normal or is it really elevated? Remember, a normal white blood cell count is anywhere between five to 10,000. Also, how do they look? How's their vital signs? Is their blood pressure really low? Are they hypotensive? Are they tachycardic? Are they having mental status changes, breathing problems? All of this could indicate that your patient may be experiencing septic shock. So you wanna monitor for those things. Now, in addition to that, you want to make sure you also know things to educate your patient about and things you need to watch out for in your patient whenever they're taking these medications. So to help us remember those main concepts, we're going to remember the mnemonic floxacins. F is for fluid intake to prevent crystal urea, and this can especially happen with ciprofloxacin. So you wanna educate the patient to take this with at least eight ounces of water and to drink fluids throughout the day because we want to prevent crystals from developing within the urinary system. Because with crystal urea, this can happen whenever the urine becomes too alkaline. And if we get the development of crystals, it can cause a blockage in the kidneys and it could lead to renal failure. So as the nurse, you want to make sure you're monitoring your patient's hydration status. So if it's not contraindicated, they need at least two liters of fluid per day. And you wanna be monitoring that urinary output. Now, as a side note, whenever you're studying the other antibiotics, this is also a teaching point with the sulfonamides as well, the crystal urea. L is for long QT interval. So quinolones can prolong the QT interval. And whenever this happens, it can lead to a lethal rhythm called torsades de plant. And there's an increased risk of the patient getting a prolonged QT interval if they're taking a quinolone along with another medication that prolongs the QT interval, like an antiarrhythmic like amiodarone. So as a nurse, you want to be looking at that ECG, measuring that QT interval, making sure it falls within normal limits. O is for older adults, 60 or older, because they are at risk for tendon inflammation and rupture, especially with the Achilles tendon being involved. So you wanna educate the patient to immediately report any pain, swelling, or like the snap feeling or immobility that they may be experiencing around a tendon. Now this is particularly important if your patient is taking corticosteroids or they have a history of diabetes or renal issues because there is a more increased chance of this happening in that older adult. And then X is for don't administer with medications that contain cations like calcium, zinc, iron, magnesium, and aluminum. Now these are big ingredients in antacids and vitamins. And you also don't want to give this with dairy products like milk, cheese, or yogurt because all of these can actually decrease the absorption of oral quinolones. So as a nurse, you wanna to remember to administer oral quinolones two hours before or after meals 
quinolones and administer oral quinolones six hours after administering antacids or vitamins containing the ingredients I just went over or two hours before an antacid. By doing this, this will help decrease the risk of altering that absorption of that quinolone. A is to avoid quinolones in children and during pregnancy. It's been found that quinolones can cause bone and cartilage problems in children. And then C is for C. diff. This is actually a super infection that occurs in the gut that can happen from taking quinolones. So you want to educate your patient and monitor your patient for any type of fever, watery diarrhea, or abdominal pain. And if they do have this, you want to report it to the physician who will order a culture of the stool to send it off to make sure the patient hasn't developed C. diff. And then there's I for interactions. You want to be familiar with the medications that could interfere with quinolones. So the big ones are like caffeine, phenytonin, warfarin, theophylline, and amiodarone. Then we have N for neuromuscular exacerbation. So you really want to monitor patients who have myasthenia gravis because quinolones can actually make the condition worse. So you'd want to be monitoring for muscle weakness. And then lastly is S for sun sensitivity. So quinolones can make the skin more susceptible to burns and blistering from the sunlight's rays. So you want to educate the patient that this can happen while they're taking the medication and for several days afterward. So they want to take measures to protect their skin whenever they're outdoors so they don't get these adverse effects. Okay, so that wraps up this video over quinolones. And don't forget to access the free quiz in the YouTube description that will test your knowledge on this material.